Shalom friends, let us talk about the Shabbat, one of the many good gifts that God has given us. How are we treating this gift? Are we using it for its purpose or are we trading it for something else and possibly creating something else out of it? The sages point out something very interesting in Genesis chapter 1, the story of creation and how man was created last out of everything, the animals and this includes even the insects. So we can learn two things from this. One is that God is so awesome and gracious that he made man last so that he could see all the good gifts that God had prepared for him. Or if man is proud, has an ego, and maybe thinks that he is the creator of things, then one could say to him that even the fly came before you. Now what happens when man thinks like this is he's using his Yetzirah, which is the evil inclination. And what's interesting is the word Yetzer is related to the word Seir, which actually means to form or to create. But what is the Shabbat about, friends? The Shabbat is not so much about thou shalt not work. It's much more deeper than this and special. It's more about stepping back and not creating and saying, Abba, Father, you are the creator of the universe and not me. I recognize you today. But sadly, man has traded God's holy Shabbat for Sunday. But one might say, but Bradley, it says in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, for example, that they gathered on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, they broke bread, and Paul preached until midnight. Let us examine this verse more thoroughly. According to the Hebrew calendar, the lunar calendar, the definition of a day begins at sundown. It goes by the moon, not the sun. So here in this verse, yes, it is Sunday, but technically, Sunday begins at the first sign of darkness Saturday night and most translations in this verse say they were gathered they were already together so what were they doing prior to this my friends they were celebrating the Shabbat now what do we do when we celebrate Shabbat is we go to shul and we praise God in service and do the liturgy and after we gather together at a house or something and we sing and we dance and we sit at the table and we talk Torah sometimes till midnight and we lechaim but well, what happens at sundown, my friends? At sundown, what we do is a meeting, which is called Havdalah. Havdalah means distinction, and it comes from the word lehavdil, which means to separate. So what they were doing here was separating themselves from the Shabbat and entering into the rest of the week. In other parts of Havdalah is the aspects of the, uh, the three aspects of the multi-wick candle, the cup of wine and the species of fragrance, which all have symbolism in the Torah. Now one might say that, but Bradley, the, uh, the bread, breaking of bread is not part of Havdalah service. But if you check your history, and even the Talmud states that breaking of bread was part of Havdalah ceremonies in the Second Temple period. And well, you could also say, but there's no wine here either. But then we have a problem. If there's no wine, then there's no communion. So it's a grave mistake on their end. So. We've, I'm just trying to throw things out there to help people think and understand uh, what we're talking about here. Havdalah. And they are actually celebrating Shabbat. Now, one might say that, but Paul says, let no man judge you of which day of the week you worship. Let me ask you this. Has the Tanakh ever said that we should ever see, uh, cease from worshiping God? No, we should actually worship God every single day. And just because Paul says this does not mean that the Sabbath is no longer um, worshipped or to be worshipped. It's a commandment from God. Now what do we do when we are confused? Remember those old bumper stickers that say, what would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? I'll tell you what he would do. He would be in the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his custom, as the Brick Kadashah says. My friends, let us be honest with each other and open up. Because... We don't want to be standing in front of the Father, having teached the least of these commandments, and the accuser standing before you saying, even the fly comes before him. So go out there, investigate more. Return to God's Shabbat, my friends, and find yourself a nice Messianic synagogue. And I might add the key word, kosher Messianic synagogue. In fact, you can check out Kehilat Melek Yisrael in Toronto, Ontario. We have online services at cmy.on.ca. 
Thank you for listening. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel.